The idea that some of us are visual learners and some of us are, for example, auditory learners is a myth. Instead, what we're finding out is that most people are going to learn better when different types of stimuli are grouped together. So presenting text with images and even sound is going to make that even more meaningful for us and easier to remember and retain. That's why we're here on YouTube, right? So how can we apply this to our notes? Hi, I'm Nicole van der Hoeven, and on this channel, I like to talk about different ways to min-max my life, including using digital tools like Obsidian. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can use visual elements to spice up your notes and the different plugins you can use to do so. The way I see it, there are five ways that you can use visuals in your notes. You can use them to capture, explain, track, aggregate, or contextualize. When you capture something, usually if you're like me, you capture that in text or maybe sometimes in video or sound. But sometimes it's enough to just embed an image from the web so we don't even have to create them ourselves. Just dragging and dropping them into Obsidian is going to spice up our notes a little bit more. If you're already using an app like Notability for your tablet that captures your handwriting as notes and brings it in as either PDFs or images, then you can put those right into your Obsidian notes as well. There's also the growing practice of sketch noting, which is a step above using your handwriting to take notes. Instead, it's all about using the visual vocabulary of pictures and simple images that you take while you're listening to a lecture or a YouTube video or something like that. My favorite tool for this is Excaladraw, which if you didn't know, also works on mobile and tablets. I use this a lot on my iPad because I just find it an easy way to take notes and then have it sync to my main Obsidian Vault. I really love how even if I draw something on the iPad, it looks great on the Obsidian mobile app for my Android phone, and it looks good in the Obsidian desktop app too. We can also use visual elements to explain a topic in more detail, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to jump to pictures right away. I think that all digital writing should be skimmable, and that counts for everything that's online, but it also, I think, should count for your notes, because it is still digital writing and you are still writing for an audience at least yourself. Obsidian notes are stored in Markdown format, and that means that you can take advantage of the headings that Markdown comes with. For example, typing a hash like this is going to make the first, the biggest heading, and then you can do different headings at different levels by adding another hash to it. So this would be second and this would be the third. I think you can go all the way up to six. This is going to be very theme dependent, but in general, most themes are going to differentiate between these headings. And it just makes it a little bit more palatable when you see things in bullet points and different colors rather than just like one big block of text. Another thing I use a lot is Obsidian Callouts, which is not technically a plugin now, it's just a core feature of Obsidian. Check out this video that I already made if you want to know how to get started with it. But let me show you an example of a note where I use it. So this is my note for the Swedish language. I am currently learning Swedish, or should I say, jag lär mig svenska. <laughs> and I, you can see that I'm using the second heading here, I'm using italics, and this block here is a callout. Now this is actually an embed from a lesson that I had with my teacher. But I like to treat lessons kind of like meetings, and I have a bit of a summary here of usually some grammatical notes or something that I've learned. And in this case, it was this note on gender. Here's another note from a module of a course that I took called Master YouTube, where I have the summary here. And again, I use bullet points, italics, and different levels of headings to break up text. I also added this photo from one of his videos. It was a screen capture. And that way, when I'm going through it, like this one is a quote, there are just so many things that I can interact with. So I can ignore like the quote and stuff. And this one is a call out, but it's one where I've hidden it. So it is automatically collapsed and I don't have to look at, into it until I click on it. So I just think that that's way better. And visually I can see, okay, this is a tip. Now this is like a quote. Um, this is a code block. 
it's just a lot easier to compartmentalize. It's like chunking in your brain when it's not all the same thing, then it's easier to pick out patterns and it's easier to distinguish between different sections. One of the TTRPG related plugins that I'm repurposing for just general use is Obsidian Leaflet. I've mentioned this a few times. I don't think I've ever done a video just on it, but it's a cool little plugin that's supposedly made for TTRPG maps. This is a map of the Gauntlet, which is a part which is a place in a pathfinder adventure path here's subsidian leaflet for a location that my dm gave me and so i was able to import the actual map and then i put these little things so that when i click on it it goes directly to that part in my notes the problem is that a lot of times you're in a dungeon and your dm isn't just going to say hey you just entered this but here's the entire map you know so a lot of the times my maps look like this this is a floor that we don't yet have a map to because we haven't fully mapped it out. And in this one, I'm using a combination of Obsidian Leaflet and Excalidra. So this is an Excalidra drawing. So if I open that up in a new window, you will see how I'm adding to this map as we find out more information. But because it is a PNG, then I can also use that as fodder for Obsidian Leaflet. A third reason why you might want to add visual elements to your PKM is to track something. Now, this kind of depends on your use case of Obsidian. I've already talked about how I use the Obsidian Kanban board to track my content calendar, but here's another use case for Kanban. It is for a TTRPG called Fate Condensed. Fate is a very lightweight game, so it doesn't require like maps or anything else. It's not very tactical and you don't even really need a character sheet. So what I did was I shared the screen while we were playing the game and that worked out quite well. It's hard to mention visual elements for tracking without mentioning the plugin Obsidian Tracker. Now this has been requested by a few of you. I promise I'm working on a video on it just so I can go into all of the things that this plugin can do. But for now, let me give you a sneak peek. Here's what Obsidian Tracker looks like. This is me tracking whether or not I've done my brilliant lesson for the day. This is me tracking my Swedish progress. Okay, well, I started tracking on Tuesday and I skipped the weekend, but I promise I am learning Swedish <laughs> and I'm going to try to get this filled in. That's the thing when you see it visually, it's like, you don't want to break the streak, you know? Here's a line chart of my sleep rating. I usually sleep pretty well. However, I'm kind of struggling with some post-COVID symptoms and um, my sleep has reflected that. And so does my energy. This is a bar chart with my energy. Now, the cool thing is that all of these are based on my daily template. So if I show you that right now, I now have these tags up at the top here in the front matter. And the Obsidian Tracker plugin goes through each of these and visualizes them in a way that I choose. Again, I'm going to do a deep dive on this, so stay tuned for that. But, you know, let me know in the comments if this is something you wanna see and I'll get it done sooner rather than later. Now, one annoying thing about putting images in Obsidian is that images aren't as easily searchable. So if you had a note and then you put an image into it, then you would be able to search that note, but you're not going to be able to search for the image unless it's for the file name. So what if there was something in the image, like you kind of wanted to tag it? Well, you can't, not without Excalidra. This is a flowchart for one of my NPCs in my D&D 5e game. Her name is Iray, and these are the abilities that she's got. So this is just to help me while I'm DMing, because, you know, DMs have a lot of things to keep track of. This is just a flowchart to help me figure out and remember all of her awesome abilities. The problem is that this, as it is, is not going to be strictly searchable unless I use Excalidra. Luckily, I did use it. So if I can open it as Markdown, if you've created the image using Excalidra, it already has all of the text that you typed in as Markdown. This is really great because then if you can, if you want to search for that in particular, you'll see that this image is being brought up. That's not something that would happen if this were just a normal image. 
but it also means that you can tag things to it. So right now it's automatically tagged with Excalibur, but you could also say flowchart, for example. And then in tags, there's a new tag called flowchart that is going to lead to the same note. This is a great way to add keywords to images so that you can find them a little bit more easily. Up until this point, the way that we've used visual elements has been relegated to making that particular note a little bit more meaningful or giving it a, a little bit more of a richer context. However, the fourth one is aggregation, because I think this is one of the best ways to use visual notes. Here's one such aggregation layer that I've added using Excala Draw, and it's about continuous testing. Now, this is a something that I created just from within Obsidian, and it's not really something that I can present to other people. It's really mainly for me. So I just like this as a distillation of a lot of different concepts. Here's another one that's actually still in progress. Now, this isn't correct yet. This is just a rough idea in my head. I'm comparing two different tools, K6 and JMeter, and I'm trying to compare them based on these different objects. So they have different vocabulary between them. So, you know, a test plan in JMeter is just the script, the JavaScript file in K6, for example, and the thread group is maybe a scenario. And I'm trying to draw comparisons there. So even if this isn't done yet, this helps me put into a single picture what I'm thinking is the differences between the structures of the two. The developer of the Excala Draw plugin, Zolt Vizcain, is also doing these awesome book reviews or book summaries, but they're entirely visual. Check out this video clip of his summary of the excellent book, How to Take Smart Notes by Sonke Ahrens. A second good visual aggregation plugin is Advanced Slides. Now, I must admit that when I first started to use this plugin, I only used it for presentations. It is so much more than that. When I actually talked to the developer of this Advanced Slides plugin, I realized that it can be used for aggregation as well. Here's an example of a presentation that I made about the difference between instrumentation and eBPF monitoring. If I do the slide preview here, you can see that all of the things here are also shown as if it were in presentation mode. The best part about advanced slides is that when things change, you can change it too. It's so easy because it's part of your notes already. So even things like this embed is from another note. And so when I change something in this note, like let's say I remove this, then that part is also going to be removed in the embed. So as my understanding of these topics changes, so does this presentation. It's like a living snapshot. I can't let this section go by without mentioning one of my favorite ways to aggregate information videos. These videos, you probably don't know this, are the ways that sometimes I consolidate information in my head because I feel like until I explain it to somebody, I can't really say that I know a topic. And so here's an example of some videos that I've made on the topic of browser-based testing versus protocol-based testing. This was a presentation that I did in 2020. This is another one in 2022. Now, I like to embed these. It seems a little narcissistic to put it there yourself, but there's also a lot of memory that has gone into this because I remember shooting this and I remember those graphics. I remember editing this. I remember researching it. And so having these videos is a great way to just remind me of something that, you know, I might have forgotten. Maybe like when I when I created this video, I definitely forgotten what I said in this 2020 video. And the last reason to use visual elements in your note taking is for contextualization. I think context is one of the things that separates traditional note taking from more modern, I say modern, although Lumen was not exactly modern, but methods like the second brain or Zettelkasten. 
I think that being able to visualize the linkages between notes and seeing them in context too is a step beyond traditional note taking. Here is my current graph view. The problem is, as you can see, with the amount of notes that I've got, I think I'm up to 6,000 plus now, it kind of struggles with visualization of the links. And so I have to apply heavy filters to kind of make it usable. Otherwise it gets kind of jerky like this. But if you have fewer notes, then this should work really well. Another plugin that I haven't talked about yet is the mind map plugin. So this is an example of a map of software testing. I wanted to talk about the different software testing types. And you can see the outline here, but I kind of wanted to visualize this outline. Now, the thing is that each of these is just a link to another page, right? So I didn't add the contents in here. I just wanted an outline of the structure. Well, with the mind map plugin, I can just click on this from the command plane, preview the current node as a mind map and it automatically creates that mind map for me based on these headings. Remember we were talking about the difference between H2, H1, and trying to use those to make your notes more accessible? Well, they come in handy here as well. So as you can see, the first one, software testing, is denoted by the single hashtag, and then functional and operational testing have the two hashes. And as long as you're doing this, and it's pretty natural to do it as well, this is what I would do normally, but this mind map plugin works really well. And it's even good for presentations. I've, I've done this as well, where if you don't want everything to be revealed, you can just start with software testing, share this screen, you can pop out this window now as well, and then you can reveal things as you talk about them. Talking about visual contextualization would not be complete without the newest plugin on the block, at least for this lot, and that's Excalibrain. This is my observability note. Now, if I want to see observability in the context of my notes, you'll notice that I have some interesting relationships here. So I'm saying that observability has is a child of my tech category, and it has as siblings observability versus monitoring, and one of its children is monitoring. Now, what does that all mean? Well, now, if I open up the command pane and I type Excalibrain, I'm going to actually use Exc Excalibrain pop-out window. And now we see observability in a wider context. We see not just the things that are in that note, but the things that are next to it, the things that are above it or its parents, and the things that are underneath it, which are its siblings. So now I'm looking at observability, not just within the note, but the relationships of that note to other things in my vault. Because it works with pop-out windows, you can just have it all the time up in another window and continue to be browsing on the other window. I'm gonna try and show you that here, although I'm using a smaller screen just so you can still see things, but you, you'll get the idea. So if I click on, for example, Prometheus versus InfluxDB here, I clicked on it in Excalibur Draw, but it also, because it's linked to the note that's open, changed it in my Obsidian Vault. So now I'm looking at the Prometheus versus InfluxDB note. So let's look at Capacitor here. And it changes, if I click on something within my Obsidian Vault, then it changes it in the view in Excalibur Brain as well. So the two things are linked and they're just different layers. It's kind of like putting, you know, the, the HUD, the HUD, the heads up display glasses, and suddenly you're seeing things on a different level. Adding a visual layer to your notes can be time consuming, but it doesn't have to be. Your notes are there for your learning after all. So take what works and discard the rest. However, if you would like to get started and dip your toes into visual PKM, I think Excaladraw is a good place to do that. So check out this video and see how you can use drawings and other visual elements to spice up your notes. Thank you for watching. Taksamikit, okay do.